Dr. Alte for the invitation. It's great to be here with you in Rome. I'm really enjoying this conference. So I would like to introduce to you Work in Progress, a project called LATE. It is on level adequate texts in language learning. And I will use the example of German as a foreign language, making sure we're dealing with this in English. So with my presentation, I move from assessment to teaching. Uh, the focus is much more on teaching. And I would like to show you in the first part of my presentation the project that we are doing and then move on to a specific example to break it down to a concrete uh, case. So let me see whether I can handle this. Um, and of course I should mention that our project is funded as an Erasmus Plus project, a cooperation project that we're doing. And here you see our partners. So the University of Vienna is coordinating this project. And we have the University of Salamanca on board, especially the Griel Research Group, which specializes on uh, constructing platforms, open educational resources. And they have an ecological approach. Um, and they try to establish or to, to construct especially user-friendly uh, platforms. Then we have the University of Tübingen, and they are computer linguists specializing on uh, search engines for texts. So they have a lot of experience with machines that can help us find text at a certain Zephyr level. And an A1 level, especially A2, uh, B1 level, would be interesting. And uh, finally, we also have Janivsi on board, the colleagues, the Ukrainian colleagues, are specialists in reading instruction. And they help us with ideas on um, how to actually um, plan the different reading lessons and what are the instruments we need to show our teachers and our teacher education program um, to improve reading skills. Oh, and ÖSD, I could have mentioned earlier because they closely collaborate with Tübingen um, be, and they are the ones who tell us the truth about the Nevis. So they did the benchmarking, sorry, the um, standard setting, and they help us uh, check whether uh, this works rightly when we, when we search our text, that we make sure that we actually do have an A2 text when we search for an A2 text. So these are the five partners involved. And uh, here you see the institutions becoming human, and we actually also pasted two people who were not in the first meeting. So this is our team, an international Erasmus team. And here you see the uh, search engine, and you also see the link. Uh, the uh, platform is already online, but it is still a work in progress. So um, you will see it still has a lot of weaknesses that we are trying to improve. So what you see here on my slide is uh, the LATL search machine, which is changing every month. Uh, this is the current state of affairs. And what you see on the left-hand side is the corpus um, with various uh, topics. And you can then filter, for example, by giving a keyword and a Zephyr level. So here, for example, I searched for pets at the A2, for texts about pets at the A2 level. And uh, then I can actually see the title, and you, you, may, you might realize we still need to work on capitalization of the title, so this is not correct yet. There are mistakes in this, but um, bear with us. We're trying to improve this. Then you can look at the texts in more detail, of course, and you can work with these texts. You can modify them, you can generate pictures, you can generate translations, and you can organize all your teaching materials into bundles, text sequences. Um, you can organize your material as you like it. Um, you can also search for texts, and uh, this was important to us, that are outside of the lateral corpus that we are building. Um, so that you can actually search a text for, on a topic that occurred yesterday, maybe news, and you want to have an authentic text in your classroom. Um, so then um, you, you cannot only search inside of our old corpus, but also go outside onto the web and find text there. And you need, of course, to check the licenses, but if you have the license to change the text, modify and edit the text, then you could also re-import it into LATL and use the um, picture generation and all the artificial intelligence uh, assistance that we have there. So um, we also have a lot of filters, which teachers so far find a little confusing. 
and um, we decided to customize these filters so that teachers can um, actually work with the ones that they think are important, so maybe number of words, you want a short text, then you can use this filter to search for especially short texts. Uh, this is something we are also still working on, how to use this in the teacher education. For example, on the right-hand side, you see you can also search for text with, which have a lot of past perfects, for example, if you want to do input flooding, this might be interesting. So that's the idea of the machine and the process in our project is that we start with a needs analysis, uh, develop this platform, pilot it uh, with very few teachers um, who use it in everyday teaching. And these are teachers from Ukraine and Spain um, at the secondary level. And we are working for them, with them for over a year. So a whole school year, we've introduced them in June and then this school year they're using the platform. And so one goal is to help them use the machines and improve their planning of reading lessons. And I'm talking about intensive reading here. Um, but the other goal is also to um, help us improve the machine, become more teacher friendly or user friendly, I should say. And of course, there is an evaluation study going on. So we have a qualitative focus group study uh, that uh, is, has a longitudinal character. And here you see materials from our webinar series for the teachers. We changed the photos that teachers display to introduce themselves uh, to avatars um, for the videography of this session. Um, but what you see here is that we are trying to build a community. So in the first session, they introduce themselves to each other. We have Spanish and Ukrainian. Uh, they work together. And uh, here, for example, they had to write three statements about themselves. And one was a lie. And this was a way of getting to know each other. Uh, there's reading on a Moodle platform, there's all kinds of materials for them available. And uh, we are also still developing materials. So um, here you see examples of posters that Tatiana Kuropatnitska in Chernivtsi produced. So she produced posters on activities that you can do before reading and that you can do while reading and that you can do after reading. So we try to find ways to simplify our ideal on teaching and differentiated teaching, for example, in the reading circle with different roles. Um, we try to find ways to put this into very simple materials that are easily accessible. And these will also be available on the lateral, and some of them already are, on the lateral uh, platform. So that we try to not only offer the text search, but also to inspire teachers to use these action-oriented and um, goal-driven uh, reading activities. The idea of building a community of practice goes back to the ESRIA model that has been widely used in the teaching, in the education of teachers of German as a foreign language by the Goethe Institute, for example. And the idea is that we can not only provide input and hope that teachers will be using it, but that we um, start with the teaching experience and their professional self-concept uh, and have, so their experience is the starting point and there is room to uh, talk about the solutions that teachers have already found for certain aspects. Um, then uh, there is our webinar series and we actually ask them to pilot these ideas, to choose from the ideas that we have discussed and to actually pilot them in the classroom and try these things out and uh, critically reflect on the experiences uh, in a portfolio, um, which is an individual um, process. And then with their reflections already done individually, they come back into the webinar and we have discussions among the colleagues uh, in this particular community of practice. And from our experience in this project, but also previous projects, this is an important step because if you want to try out something new, uh, it's hard, as we all know from various domains of life. Uh, it's hard and you need support. So you need to see that somebody else managed to do it in Ukraine or somebody else managed to do it in Spain. And you need to ask about the critical uh, aspects that you found out were difficult in your own classroom. So the teachers are supporting each other by um, exchanging their experiences and reflections 
on trying out new, um, new procedures. So in our focus group study, um, we already started to interview the teachers, the Ukrainian and Spanish teachers, um, but this is still ongoing, so there will be two more points in time to see how things develop. And of course, the machine is developing at the very same time. Um, now, if we look at these quotations, and I've just brought uh, a few of them to illustrate the point, uh, we see um, how they react to these new, to these new tools. So one teacher said, it would be nice if there was a function keywords, if they were subtly, automatically highlighted, written out in the material so that we do not write out on the board before the lesson. This is hypothet hypothetical, if there is so much, so if there is such a thing, it would be good. So without going into the technical details of the keyword um, search, um, you see that teachers are easily reacting to this and formulating wishes and needs and making suggestions that the, um, that the team in Salamanca then is trying to incorporate into the system. Or the second teacher says, and I would also add a fourth icon for the age of the children, because nature for the first grade and nature for the ninth grade, even if it is uh, the first or second foreign, foreign one, is different. And even if it is, a, if it is an A1 text, it may be different for young children than for older ones. So this is an easy, um, an easy suggestion. Uh, this is something that the teacher is missing um, from our search. And uh, so now we need to think about how this can be realized and probably it can be realized pretty easily according to the uh, sources that we have used. Um, <clears throat> let me read two more quotes to you. So here we have an interaction, teacher A says, yes, but all matrix is as unclear as how to use it, and B uh, agrees that it's somehow, in my opinion, a very professionally compiled site, which is understandable for those who compile it, namely for computer scientists, their IT specialists, and as for ordinary users, well, for teachers, not so much. Look at this table, do you understand something there? So there is criticism, there is confusion, so teachers point out which aspects that the um, computer scientists thought were clear, need improvement. And so I think this is a crucial proce process in our project um, that we are actually at a very early stage um, compiling this kind of feedback. Let me read one more quote to you. Who has tasks, shows them. Maybe I'm already fantasizing, but it's all real now and it will really attract even more people to interact, to use. Because bare texts are good. But it takes a lot of time to develop tasks. This is the most important thing on the basis of a good text to develop useful and necessary tasks. Therefore, if there was such a function so that teachers could share their work, not keep it in the classroom that we have already created so virtually here. So here you see a teacher formulating a wish for more interactive, uh, for a more social platform. And this is probably something that we cannot deliver in this particular project, it's too short, but uh, our hope is to um, find out more about teacher wishes like this, uh, but also to bring the platform to a point where it really works and illustrates how this can be done, and then maybe move into a second phase where we are actually building a community. So there's very few people using this at this point. So let me now turn to internal differentiation, which we hope to foster with this kind of um, with this kind of tools. And I would first of all like to concentrate on type on a certain type of internal differentiation, where the students get the same text and they all pursue the same reading goal, but they get activities at different levels. And then we will look uh, at some other ways of differentiation as well. And the question, of course, behind this is um, how can we use the artificial intelligence tools that we have at hand to make internal differentiation happen? And uh, how do we need to incorporate this into the platform so that they're easy to use for teachers? So I would like to use this text as an example. It's from Spotlight. It's, it has been classified at the A2 level for detailed reading. And it is about uh, an internship, um, but it's not a regular internship, it's an internship, and you see the English translation. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Somebody help me with this. Somebody save me. 
I have no idea what I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here you see the English translation. Um, it's about an internship where you go to 44 different companies um, to have a look at different jobs and then decide whether you know one of them might actually suit you. And we see it's an interview. I have highlighted the questions um, in bullet print. And the first paragraph, the um, um, person is asked, which comp company did you last work for? And she explains a little about the places that she went to. And uh, then she, the next question is, what profession will you learn next? Uh, and she talks a little about um, how they travel to very many different cities and how, re how they report on Facebook about their experiences. And the last question is, uh, was there already a job that you want to do later? And then she starts talking about her particular experiences and uh, how some jobs require physical strength, um, but how there's also much in this field for her as a woman. And she also finds it attractive that you can go to college and combine this. So that's the text we were using as an example to work with our teachers um, and explain the ideas. And of course, we introduced them to the descriptors uh, of the Sefer. Here we focus on the A2 um, level. And we talk about reading comprehension, but also uh, we place a lot of importance on strategies. So. Let me briefly take you through um, the idea of having internal differentiation by offering different activities to the students. So we always start with a pre-reading phase where we activate knowledge and anticipate text content. Uh, and here you might show the beginning of the text in three steps, the title, uh, the rec record internship, then the first sentence, Charlotte Stanke from Handewitt near Flensburg does 44 internships. And the third sentence, with this campaign, the skilled craft sector wants to make its professions better known. So this would be, I think, um, a, a rather regular way of starting um, or introducing the text. Um, and what I've done here is I've um, sketched three activities. So if you present the three impulses in the L1 with a picture, you make sure that everybody, even the weakest students in your class, know what the text is going to be about. And you might not want to use um, uh, the L1, that's okay, obviously. Uh, but this is just an example of an easy, uh, oh, sorry, of an easy activity. And the medium group would uh, do something very similar. They, um, to them, you present, present these three impulses in German. Um, but you create a picture with the artificial intelligent, intelligence, which is telling about the text content. And you could also present these three impulses uh, without a picture. So if you have a situation, and most of us have all the time, that students are very different uh, in terms of what they can do, um, a very heterogeneous classroom, then here they would be doing the same thing, and you would be working with them as a whole group, but they could choose which activity they find suitable for themselves. Then typically you establish a reading goal. This makes the action-oriented approach. And I think here with this text um, is the record practical and interesting option for you uh, to look for arguments against and in favor of this type of activity would be a suitable goal. So the questions raised here were which advantages and disadvantages of the record practicum does Charlotte Stanke mention. So you have to go into a detailed reading of the text to actually find the arguments. And then, of course, if you have an action orientation and you want to react to this uh, option yourself, you also need to ask um, which advantages and disadvantages do you see yourself and add these to the text. So what we do in the while, or suggest to do in the while reading phase then, is to have a first round of reading that um, is aimed at global understanding. Um, so here, understanding the macro structure is the first round of reading, and students are to understand what each paragraph is about. Hmm, that was three paragraphs. So an easy way to do it would be to match a paragraph into picture. And I've actually uh, tried, I oh, know, sorry, this was wrong. Uh, I'll show you uh, pictures later. So here, you actually ask the students to 
match the paragraph and the picture, and you could um, construct pictures of a boat builder or of 42 different cities or a craftsman. And I was confused. I do have the pictures. Here they are. <laughs> so uh, I tried using our artificial intelligence, and you can highlight when you use the text uh, search engine, you can highlight parts of the text, and it then creates these pictures for you, and of course, very many are not suitable. And of course, there is a lot of critical reflection on uh, what we want to do with this in the future, but we're trying to explore the possibilities. And, uh, and here you see that for the first paragraph, it would be rather easy now for a teacher to actually create a picture to go along with an authentic text that was maybe published yesterday. Uh, for the sentence, we are in 42 different cities, I created this, took me some pictures, I got some pictures that were not usable. And uh, the last one, uh, when you have humans, and you can see here, there's something strange about the arms. Uh, I wonder whether you can see it really well, but uh, sometimes we get strange pictures concerning hands and faces, so there is a lot... Um, that we will have to think about and also uh, maybe wait for artificial intelligence to get better. But I thought this was usable. Uh, I thought this was usable for a reading instruction. So the prompt here was, I noticed that many jobs are very demanding in terms of physical, physical strength. And I think this was a picture um, that would help to understand the paragraph. So the idea is they get these three pictures and then they have to match uh, it with the reading text. Um, a more challenging task would be to underline the keywords or even to formulate your own title for each paragraph. So again, the same idea. Students are working on the same task, but at different levels. And artificial intelligence ha helps me as a teacher to prepare the materials. After understanding the macrostructure, we suggest to do more rounds of reading, at least one more round for the detailed comprehension, but we also try to convince our teachers to integrate strategy instruction and uh, have a round of reading where they practice a strategy. So the strategy has already been introduced at some point. We have many posters for that for our teachers to use as well. Um, and then here an easy task would be to present the inferred meaning in L1. Or a medium uh, task could be to underline helpful information before and after the unknown word and present that to the class. Where did you get the hints to find out? Or a rather difficult and complex metacognitive activity would be to model, think aloud while inferring. And this could be done in L1, I think, uh, to the class so that weaker students also understand how um, more advanced students are actually able to infer unknown words from the content, context. So if we look at the last round of reading, this is where you pursue the reading goal, the third round of reading, and here we ask uh, students to mark arguments with symbols, plus and minus, uh, so arguments in favor and against the, the uh, internship, and uh, we ask them to transfer it to a table to get the overview of the arguments. So you could use literal statements from the text, um, you could also give them paraphrases, which are easily produced. Um, or you could ask them to formulate the arguments in their own words and put them into the table. So here you see some of the paraphrases, um, but I think I'll skip this part and uh, move on to the post-reading phase. So in the post-reading phase, it will be important to actually reach the reading goal. And now we um, would ask students to add their own arguments and post your opinion. So if students are not ready yet to write their own opinion, we could have them choose from three examples with different opinions, which one is closest to yours. So they only have to re react to the, to the postings of others. Um, but we could also show them scaffolds to post your own opinion. Um, so here is what I mean when I say scaffolds for writing, just some examples. Um, and we can, of course, ask them to post their own opinion without any scaffolds. Um, and then usually we also use the text for language learning. So after we have reached our reading goal, I think we could also do things like grammar instruction, focus on explicit forms or explicit language learning uh, by focusing on the forms or looking at the vocabulary. And here the idea is to do a mind map of the word field practicum or job internship. Um, 
And here the um, students in, who chose the easy task would find words from the text. Um, others could add their own word words that they already know. They would be working on the same product, but doing different things. And the most difficult would be to add lexical information on the words in the mind map. For example, in German, you would want to um, also note down the article or vowel changes or plurals and things like that. So this is the idea uh, when I said we have the same text and the same goal and we use different activities. At, um, at the different levels. But of course, with artificial intelligence, it might also be interesting to explore the options of making the texts easier and present the same text in three different versions to the students. So we would have the same text and uh, the same goal, which would keep the class together, uh, but we would have text variations at different levels. And at this point, our machine is not working that well for German yet. Uh, but we think it should be doable uh, within the time. And here you see the example of Daflex. So there have already been colleagues uh, here in uh, France. Uh, this example is from the French colleagues. You can see the um, uh, link. And Daflex is a machine where you can insert your text. And I inserted our little example. And it shows you um, in green, in light green, all the A1 words. And uh, in, in darker green, all the A2 words. And uh, for B1, I think it's yellow. So also there are red words that the system doesn't recognize. And then you can go through your text and you can actually um, decide, okay. So most of this in black print is A1 words. And then I can uh, find out which ones are the A2 words according to, the, to this system, or we will be using Profile Deutsch, uh, the, the receptive word lists. And you can easily see, ah, these are the ones that I should or could be teaching at this particular level. Um, and then there are also words which I marked in red, which are beyond the level, the A2 level in this case. So they are either V1 or even higher. And uh, these are words I need to do, I, I need to think about what to do. So for example, the word from the title, I definitely need for this text, so I cannot replace it. Uh, and there are other words that I might want to be teaching, although they are beyond the A2 level because they are so important for the text, but there should be very, very few, I guess. Uh, and in many cases, I think I will have to look for a, a synonym or a paraphrase uh, to make sure that my input is really geared um, towards the A2 level. So I could replace a difficult word uh, like Bootswerft, <coughs> I could replace by another word. Sorry. So here I find, yeah, it's hard to see, um, but you maybe spotted it anyway. So Bootswerft is beyond the A2 level and I can replace it uh, by, uh, that means Boatyard, I could replace it by company, by a more general word. So this way, uh, if the machine does this for me, now here I've done it by hand, uh, this I think will be a good service to teachers and um, we hope that teachers will see the potential of this and we will see how they actually work with it and how they actually deal with it. And the same could be done for syntactical simplification. I'm not going into this uh, in too much detail, um, but here the idea is you do the same thing. You look at the syntactical structures, and according to Profile Deutsch, you find structures that are beyond the A2 level, and you kind of replace them if you have the license to modify the text. So this is what my text looked like in the end. Um, but let's move on. So that's uh, a very simple idea of internal differentiation. And we're not at the point for German to make this work yet, but we think it cannot be too hard. Uh, well, actually, the computer linguists uh, are optimistic about doing this. And I think this has really high potential because on the left-hand side, what we saw, that was a lot of work in creating activities for everybody, for the different groups. So that's really much more for material developers than for teachers, I suppose. This is not something that you can do in everyday teaching with a, a high workload. Um, so I think varying the text has high potential. Uh, if, if we can do this, I think teachers have a good chance of trying to get to, sorry, of trying to establish internal differentiation in their classroom. Um, 
And then there are many other ways that we are thinking about and exploring in the discussions with our teachers, and I will not illustrate them. But you could also think about having the same text, but different goals or goals that are at uh, different levels, uh, one more challenging and one less challenging. But here the problem is that you can't bring the class together again. So I think there is a problem with that. If three groups pursue different goals, you don't have this moment of closure in the end where the group brings it all together. So I'm a little skeptical, but we will also look into this. And then of course you can have different groups read different texts, um, and they could be at different levels as well, uh, and then pursue the same goal. So we are working on exchanging information on animals, for example, and we read different texts, and one text is easy, and one group reads about this animal, and another group reads about another animal. So, Many ways to explore, and the question, of course, is what can teachers and want te what do teachers actually want to do in their classrooms? Um, how can they handle all these options and all the work that is behind it? And our, um, from our surveys, we get the idea that very few teachers are doing internal differentiation. Of course, it's a consensus uh, in language teaching, teaching that you can do it, you should be doing it, but the real um, picture. Um, we have indications, and I think this might match your experience, internal differentiation is rare. So our hope is that it will be possible with these tools to make internal differentiation easier for teachers, and in this way, sorry, then actually um, come to a point where we use the digital tools and the artificial intelligence in a way that it becomes possible that every L2 reader in my classroom is motivated by the experience of success, to make success um, possible for hopefully every single person in the classroom. And uh, I think this is an, a, a potential that is worth exploring. And uh, I need you to keep your fingers crossed for us. We have uh, one and a half years to go, and we hope uh, to present tools at the end that will convince teachers. Thank you very much for your attention.